What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be doing a full walkthrough of the DJI Assistant application for your computer. This is a very powerful tool if you own any of DJI's drones, from the Spark all the way to the Inspire 2, as it allows you to manage firmware, calibrate sensors, and a lot of very other important things. For some of you, you may not even know what the DJI Assistant application is, and because of that, I'm going to start from the very beginning here on my computer. Now, there are three different Assistant applications, and I made this little list that I'm also going to put down in the description but basically if you have any of these older drones like the spark the mavic air the mavic pro the mavic pro platinum the inspire 2 or even the dji goggles then you're going to want to use the regular assistant application for the phantom 4 series of drones and the mavic 2 series of drones they both have their own assistant application so make sure you download the correct version for whichever drone you're trying to manage now these downloads can be found over on dji's website so if we are on the page for the dji inspire 2 we want to head to the download section and then scroll all the way down to the bottom to find the download for the assistant application for our corresponding operating system. Remember, this app can be used with all of those older drones, so even if you have a Spark, this link will work. Now, if you own a Phantom 4, you'll do the same thing on the Phantom 4 page by selecting Downloads and then choosing the correct version for whatever operating system that you're running. By now, you probably already know the deal, but the same thing goes for the Mavic 2. Select Downloads, and then it'll be right there. All right, cool. So these apps vary a little bit between the different versions. So I'll first go over the Assistant app for the older drones, and then I'll move on to the Mavic 2 series and then the Phantom 4 series, but I would recommend watching the entire video through as I won't be repeating the similarities in depth once I get to those other drones like the Mavic 2 and Phantom 4. So to connect your drone to the Assistant application, we have to tether it to the computer through a cable, and for the sake of these older drones, it will be a micro USB cable. Once the drone is all plugged in and turned on, the Assistant application will recognize the device and you can begin to access some of the functionalities. Now the menu over here on the left side of the screen will show us everything that we can do within the assistant application and we'll start up here at the top with firmware update. This is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to update to the most current firmware for your drone or even downgrade if you wish. Another option that you have is refreshing the firmware, so essentially restoring the newest firmware that you already have on your drone. This can be helpful if your drone is acting up for some reason and will likely be something that DJI support tells you to do right off the bat if you ever approach them with a problem. Personally, Personally, I like to update all of my drones this way through the assistant application because it's a lot faster than transmitting that data over the air from the phone to the remote controller and then to the drone. It's also nice to be able to check out things like the release notes on the side, although sometimes DJI doesn't include any information in there, which is pretty frustrating. Okay, moving on, the next option on the menu is data upload, which allows you to take the flight logs off of your drone and save them locally or upload them to DJI servers for analyzation. Now, if you look over your flight logs in the DJI Go app, it's very intuitive, as you can see where your drone was flying and the telemetry, but if you save these files to your computer, then they come out in these .dat files, which open up in something like text edit and are filled with an incredible amount of characters like even if you try to scroll up and down, your computer will likely freeze up. I would say that this function is primarily used to send data to DJI through their report data file button at the top. And to do this, you'll have to log into your DJI account. This is useful in situations where say your drone goes totally haywire by itself, it falls out of the sky and you have no idea what happened. They can then analyze these files and determine what happened. Now this next page on the menu screen, which is known as flight data, sort of allows you to open these .dat files, but it just does not work. Maybe I'm using it wrong, but I've gone to multiple forums and people just can't seem to get it to work. Now because of this, I've come up with a workaround or another solution, and it's a website called Air Data UAV. I'll leave a link down in the description. This software essentially takes those .dat files and turns them into something that you can actually see. So I've already uploaded one here, and as you can see, all the information that it gives you like battery temperature, maximum distance takeoff and land battery. I mean, it shows you some incredible data and it's not as pretty as the flight logs viewed from the DJI Go app, but it does give you a whole lot more information to look at. Anyway, jumping back to the DJI Assistant application, the next option that we have is the black box tab, which isn't filled with really anything except for the save to local button. If you click this, it allows you to choose a save location and we begin pulling information off of the drone for you to look at. Again, just like with those flight logs, a lot of this is text files 
filled with data that can easily be shared with DJI, but may prove to be of no use to you, unfortunately. If you guys know what a black box is on a traditional airplane, like a large jet liner, then you'll probably understand what this does. Next up, we have the ability to calibrate the vision positioning sensors on our drones. So in this case, with my Mavic Pro, we can calibrate the sensors on the front and the bottom. This is done by first matching the distance of the drone with a small box on the screen, and then following the boxes all the way around the entire screen. You'll need to do this two times Times per set of sensors so for the Mavic Pro it's a total of four times but if you're using something like the Mavic 2 Pro with obstacle avoidance sensors on all sides except for the top you're gonna be calibrating for a while now once you've completed the calibration the information collected will be synced to the drone which takes about a minute and once that's completed you can restart your drone or just turn it off for those wondering this is used in any instance when a drone has some sort of vision positioning error so unless you see that indicated through your DJI Go app you won't have to worry about this the next Next option that we have here on the side is simulator and I've got to say that it's kind of pointless. I don't know, I was messing around with it the other day and while you can use your remote to fly your drone in the simulated space, it kind of sucks. Now DJI did release a new simulator app that is separate from this, it's Windows only, but it's like a legit video game so it'll actually be a lot more beneficial to pilots looking to train through a simulation instead of in the real world. Again, this is perfect for beginners as it gives you all of these different options to go through obstacles and fly a bunch of different drones. The final tab that we have inside of the assistant application is the Wi-Fi settings, which will be there for any drone that is able to be connected to via Wi-Fi from your smartphone. From here, you can change the network name as well as the network password, and this is perfect if you want to, say, set something more secure or you just forgot what you set it to. All right, so now we're going to move on to the assistant application for the Mavic 2 series of drones. That's the Mavic 2 Zoom, the Mavic 2 Pro, and the Mavic 2 Enterprise, and there's a lot of similarities between all these applications. So, as I stated in the beginning, in this video, I'm only going to be going over the differences. Now remember, we have to go into a totally new application which is named DJI Assistant 2 for Mavic. A lot is the same over here in the menu, like the firmware update portion, the calibration portion, which again, remember, takes longer now because we have so many more sensors on these new drones. And the final similarity is Simulator, which as I already stated, is definitely not worth a try. The one difference is what was once known as Data Upload is now Log Export and is a little bit more intuitive. In this normal mode, we have the ability to store our flight data locally or upload the data to DJI servers if need be, but now we can select advanced mode which gives us different tabs up at the top. This allows us to only export data about certain components of the drone which can make things easier if there's say a problem with your gimbal and you just want to analyze that. Again, if you want to analyze this data yourself, I'd recommend using Air Data and that link will be down in the description. The final thing I want to note is that the choices here are more limited than those for the older drones, but honestly it seems like they cleared out all of the crap and made it a little bit more streamlined. Now to wrap this up, we want to take a look at the Phantom Force Assistant application which is nothing different than what we've already seen. So the options that we've got are firmware update, data upload, flight data, calibration, and simulator. All things I've already gone over, but in their own separate app for the Phantom 4 series of drones. So that's the Phantom 4 Standard, the original Phantom 4, and then the Phantom 4 Advanced, and the Phantom 4 Professional. Oh, and also the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0. So guys, there we have it. That is the full walkthrough of the DJI Assistant application for DJI's current lineup of drones. Personally, I think it is a very powerful tool, and if you own a DJI drone, you should know your way around it, and hopefully after watching this video, you do. I'd recommend downloading it for your computer. It's a pretty small file, and it gives you a lot of these powerful tools, and then also in combination with other applications like Air Data, it really does give you a lot of beneficial things to look at. I do kind of wish that DJI would implement some different things into the actual assistant application itself just some different features to really make it seem even more powerful and honestly like a must-have for anyone who owns DJI drones uh, but guys hope that you enjoyed the video be sure to let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below and as always I'll talk to you later peace